This is the engine of my 1928 Austin 7. Uh, I wanted to fit electronic ignition. My Lotus, I fitted it to my Lotus Elan and uh, within half an hour I had it up and running more smoothly, um, ticking over nicely, it was fantastic. And I thought it must be possible to put it onto an Austin 7. The Lotus Elan came as it was um, a Lucas distributor it came uh, ready just to fit and it was two minute job fitted wired up and running and Austin 7 a little bit more tricky because nobody makes a kit so I wanted to take the normal Austin 7 distributor looks a little bit like this more or less whip out the innards and put in electronic ignition which looks a little bit like this. The whole thing is fairly simple and I hope to be able to show you how to do it. I'm not taking this off because I've got it running perfectly now and I don't want to disturb it but what I'll do is run through with another distributor I've got what you need to do. My car's running 6 volts so I needed a 6 volt uh, conversion kit and I went for the Stealth which is supplied by AccuSpark and it's a 6 volt one off of a Volkswagen. It's, uh, the kit is actually Kit 29 Bosch RH on the label. Um, quite easily to get off eBay. And the cost off eBay, oh, 29 to 34 pounds, depending. Um, so it's, it's not that expensive. There is a man who actually does the conversion for you, but he charges you 250 pounds. And I'm quite pleased that I managed to do this for under 35 pounds. The kit comes with the pickup, unit there with a base plate. It comes with the, uh, well I've, there's four magnets in there that, uh, that sense through here and give you the spark and some uh, conductive grease for the to, to cool the unit. I'll show you how all that works. So that's what comes with the kit. Fairly simple, only two wires to connect. Let's see how we can get on. Right, so there's the, the old distributor with the old uh, points and contacts. Now, it's fairly straightforward, Ro the uh, rotor arm comes off, uh, you knock out, I've already done it, you knock out the pin and the, uh, the gear comes off the end, pull out the shaft and there's the shaft. Now the shaft, the problem we've got is that the, the donut with the magnets won't fit, on the, won't fit over the shaft. So that has to be uh, to be ground down. Now the other problem we've got is that it's case hardened. So I took it to a friend and to ask him to turn it down on his lathe, but unfortunately it was so hard that uh, his lathe didn't touch it at all. So what I had to do was to grind it down with the grind on the grindstone to get to a rough shape that I needed, and then take that and. Uh, very carefully with a file grind it to uh, to the right size so this is a good a reasonable tight fit let me just show you how I did this because I, I haven't got a lathe myself uh, but I do have a grindstone so let's just have a look quick run through how I did it obviously it was easy on the grindstone you just take it very gently run it round to get it round. Now the good thing is that because it's case, case hardened, the further to the centre you get, the softer the metal becomes. Now not having a lathe, I wondered how I could do that. So I took took the, got it down to within a, I don't know, a, a couple of mil of what I needed, and then took it to my pillar drill here. So having ground it to a rough sort of shape, I then popped it into the pillar drill like so. See, I tightened it up. I then took a flat diamond file set the, uh, the, the drill in motion and then wedged the, um, the, the file at the back of the pillar there, this going round and I managed then quite easily to get it to the right size. Um, took a few bits of trial and error but I managed to get there quite easily. That really is the most trickiest part of the whole operation. Once the shaft was ground down, and I, I left actually, obviously I haven't done this one as I said I'm not going to do it, but I left the, uh, you need that shoulder left on so that it uh, doesn't fall through the hole in the, uh, in the distributor there. So you need the shoulder kept on, but that's the part, the square part there is the need to grind down to get this uh, little donut to fit on top. Once that was done, it's a fairly easy job then to take out the base plate of the uh, distributor. Uh, two screws, one there I've already removed, 
and there's a second there that I should remove uh, and then the um, the base plate will come out or take off the split pin on top of the uh, the contacts there the whole thing will come out I'll strip that down now there we go base plate removed the two screws took the whole lot out uh, no need really to take the split pin out of there um, the whole thing just comes straight out taking those that screw there and that one there right the other thing you don't need is the, um, the condenser so the condenser could come off like so and then if we take off the I suppose this is electrode really out of there that pushes out quite simply like so and we're now ready really to fit in the Accu, the AccuSpark device uh, I decided to do, take the uh, base place off the Accu, AccuSpark um, device which is just a two allen keys of the loose nose off um, I decided to do that basically because I think it, the only way that to fit it is with the large nut through the little drill there I suppose but I thought if I just took it off there get rid of the base place I've got quite a tidy unit and just needs two little holes to be drilled into the, um, the distributor so taking those screws out there we go now positioning it I <laughs> I didn't think it really mattered where so the wires one of the wires has to come through there so I decided that I just fit it in alongside of there and very gently I drilled a couple of holes in the bottom now what you have to make sure is that you put in the shaft and this is obviously fitted on top here but, but it the snug fit right at the bottom the sensor is actually the very bottom part here not the top as I thought it was to start with it's down at the bottom there if you can see so it's actually got to line up like that so you need um, that must not touch and it's, it's a bit arbitrary really but you need about one or two mil gap between the sensor and the pickup so when you put drilling your holes, you fit in your donut, pretend I've done the shaft in there, and make sure that you have about a mil, a mil gap there. A couple of mil, millimetre, two mil. It's, it's, the accuracy is not too bad, but it's, it must not touch. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. When you fit the AccuSpark unit to the base there with your two holes and a couple of small nuts and bolts, make sure that you put the conductive grease underneath because it's, you've got to dissipate the heat from the unit. Uh, apparently if you don't do that, then the whole the, the, the thing will overheat and cook. So to cut your grease out, put it liberally underneath, pop it on and put your two... Um, two nuts um, bolts and nuts on there through and just go through to the other side right and there's my finished unit in the car before I put it in the car I actually tried the whole thing did a bench test tried it all out on the bench I took the coil off I took the battery out um, the distributor the plugs and had them all firing on the on the workbench because that's far easier than doing it in the car so then I could gauge out where number number one cylinder was going to fire because it's always nice to have number one on the top left hand side there and doing it on the bench it's far easier than doing it in the car and it's much because you can just twiddle the end of the uh, the gear on the end of the uh, housing of the distributor and you get some nice cracking sparks and also some good shocks too if you're not careful and it really does kick like a mule this 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 device so the wiring once in the car is very simple there's basically two wires a red and a black the red wire I drilled another hole in the base place and just tucked it through underneath out of the way 
because that's really an extra wire that you wouldn't have on the original. So it comes out underneath and then comes up. So the red wire comes up and it actually connects to the SW, the switch side, if you've got an old coil, SW side, or if it's a modern coil, I presume it's to the negative side, which goes to this, sorry, negative earth, to the positive side, um, if you've got uh, negative earth. So that's the positive that goes to ignition as the drive for the coil. And the black wire then, I use the Bakelite housing, which I, I modified slightly, um, but actually took a, a brass bolt through the back of it with a, a connector on there, a ring connector. So the black wire was connected to the back, comes out here, another one of the little ring spade connector. It comes off here, then comes along here, up into there and connects to the contact breaker side, the CB side. That then is completely original from the outside. You can't see the red wire. The black wire is connected up where the wire used to go off to the, uh, to the coil, sorry, to the condenser. Then on the condenser side, I actually made, because you want to leave the condenser in place for originality, I made a little, little plate there uh, like the original. I actually made that out of a, a piece of um, well, polythene from a 5 litre oil can and uh, covered it with uh, shrink wrap so that it looks just like the original um, and then just popped it on. doesn't do anything because it's, it's, it's just nylon or polythene and goes there but it just makes it for completeness and makes it look uh, like the original. So once that was all done then the tricky bit then is timing it. Um, and that really did take the time because although I got it, I knew where it was firing on number one, uh, I don't own a strobe light or anything as, as, as uh, technical as that, so I tend to do it all by, by hearing, by, by sound. But I, I couldn't even get the thing to fire. And um, what it was was the relationship with the rubber donut, um, the little donut thing with the four magnets, the relationship of that with the sensor. Um, now I bolted the sensor down because that's that's where I decided to put it so but I could pry the donut off here and just move it round um, about an eighth of a turn and uh, by luck it fired and once you've got it firing then you can do adjustments as you would normally do by turning the uh, the distributor around and uh, lifting it over a, a tooth or so to get it lined up and once you've got that then it really is just normal uh, tuning uh, timing like you'd normally just time the car ever so easy to do once you know that it's the relationship between the rubber donut here and the um, and the sensor at the back. That, that's the only tricky little bit of doing this, apart from obviously grinding down your shaft. That's a little bit difficult, but guys with a, a, light, a lathe and a grindstone, it's not that difficult if you've got the right tools. Um, what I've also done is popped a couple of dots on, one on there and one on there. So I know now if those two are lined up, that it's actually firing on um, the rotor arm there is on number one cylinder. Um, you can see if you take it back there, it's going to be at number one. So that that really is just uh, so when you when you're taking it off, you know exactly where you're going to put it back. Um, so I haven't got all the trouble with uh, moving the donut. But really, once it's on, it's on. You're not going to touch it again. So let's put it together, and I'll show you it running. Well, you can hear it running anyway. Well, no cheating. I'm doing this from cold, so uh, a little bit of choke. Thing I did um, because 
and with age everything becomes loose and worn and I've got movement here on the um, on the advance and retired lever so I actually got and I find they're very useful a bicycle inner tube and cut them up as rubber bands slice through a bicycle inner tube and gives you these nice rubber bands that don't perish very very quickly and I've actually just wrapped that round there it's out of sight really that, to make that nice and solid so it doesn't move the other thing I found and a slight little bit of movement in the distributor housing there but I a little bit of a trick that I'll show you when I did there to, to strengthen that up because that was really wobbly and that probably was causing my problem with my normal points but uh, with one of these units it doesn't matter about the plug gap um, gaps and things like that because it's just picking up a sensor so it wouldn't matter if it was wobbly but it's nice to firm it up so what I did quite simply take a cable tie which is actually made to measure to fit in the recess at the end of the uh, distributor there and gently wrap it round like so there we go pulling it tight and carry on wrapping it until it protrudes slightly like so you can see it just protruding over there and then cut the end off Oops. and then gently ease that into the housing you have to just ease it round pop it in if it doesn't fit then just cut another little bit off until you get it so it just drop it it's a tight fit but drops in that then takes all the play out of the of the housing and will uh, firm up the distributor so it, it stops any wobble simple but uh, effective well i hope you've enjoyed listening to and seeing my video i hope that uh, you'll have a go at trying to put electronic ignition onto your own um, Austin 7. Uh, I think it's well worthwhile. Mine seems to start smoothly, runs more smoothly. Uh, whether it uses less fuel or not, I don't know, but uh, time will tell. But uh, anyway, enjoy having a go. Thank you.